Hi, it's me, Charlene. I'm journaling a very special verse in Psalms today. It's Psalm 42 verse 7. And I'm going to be using one of my new principles. This one is called Nostalgia and this one's really close to my heart because when I read the words that the psalmist wrote, deep calls unto deep. It conjures for me a feeling that's very similar to, to the feeling of nostalgia. The literal translation of the word nostalgia is the pain from an old wound. And when I read this verse, it's the feeling just seems so appropriate, the description of how our souls long for that communion with our God, for that connection and relationship that we were always intended to have with him. And um, actually, if you read the verse in context, you'll see just a few verses back is that very well-known piece about the, the deer that says, As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. And just, I don't know, for me in this chapter, it's like the psalmist is describing the longing of the heart and the soul for this lost relationship, for this this first love, for, for the Lord himself. And I, I just find it such such a beautiful piece of of, of scripture. And I mean, if you if you really think about, take a moment to think about it, you realize that, you know, why would a deer be panting for water? So, you know, it could be that the deer is being chased um, or hunted by a predator. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's running for its life or or maybe it's running away from danger, like like a forest fire. So, I mean, there's at least two reasons why it could be running away. And in both cases, the water itself would not just be to quench his thirst, but the water actually offers safety and sanctuary because with a predator chasing him, the water would mask his scent, would cover his trail. And if it was a fire that he was running from, the water would also offer that safety and that sanctuary. And I think, you know, if you consider it that way, when we think of our souls thirsting for God, the way that deer is panting for water, it's that, that, searching for that safety and and solace and sanctuary that we find in him so for me that just really sums up the whole idea of deep calling unto deep but i'm creating this background for the page using some distress oxides and i've got one of those round blending tools with the little detachable sponge thingy that you use with them and um, the only thing with distress oxides is you need to use a different blender or different blending tool for each color because if they mix on on the sponge they make sort of a muddy awful effect so you know you kind of got to swap out for every color that you're using but i really love working with the oxides because the colors go on so smoothly and they blend so beautifully and now, this one that I'm using for, to distress all the edges is called um, Ground Espresso, I think. But I'll list, I'll list everything that I use in the video's description. But the Ground Espresso is just so nice for adding a sort of a bit of a vintagey, distressed feel to everything. So it's definitely one of my favorites. Then I've also got these Viewmaster reels, which are actually original Viewmaster reels from my collection of random vintage stuff and the same with the stamps the stamps are also original vintage stamps in the principle i've i've actually um created some viewmaster reels from original ones for you and i've added some stamps in the principle i'll put i'll put the link for that in the video description as well um then these sort of polaroid photos they're they're all really when i was creating this capturing moments from my childhood, the things that stood out for me, like road trips every December to Durban and hours spent playing outside on our bikes, the, the mini fields on my grandparents' farm where my sister and I used to play hide and seek. And, you know, those sort of, those moments that when you look back and, and you have that, that nostalgic feeling, those, those are the moments that I tried to capture in this and it's that same feeling that that whole sort of deep calling unto deep conjures conjures for me but just creating my layers planning where i'm going to put everything this is always the tri the tricky part because i am um, often forget where i've placed everything 
when I go and stick it down but I have a new little trick for that and I'll do a video using some glad press and seal so that'll probably be in my next video I'll make sure I use that and show you if you're like me and you forget where you've put everything that's the way to go but um things like the these fussy cutting and the different elements and the stamping and the distressing these are sort of some of all of my favorite techniques all ro rolled into one I know I've actually done a few pages with these types of techniques then I do tend to keep coming back to it because it really is one of my favorite art styles it's very similar to art journaling and it just really is one of my favorite styles I've stuck most of the stuff down with a Tombow multi-glue which is amazing stuff I mean it just works so incredibly well I do just have a really bad habit of getting it all over my fingers when I'm working with it and then everything sticks to my fingers after that so I switched over to my Zyron sticker maker for to stickerize the stamps and other little small elements because everything was sticking to my fingers from the glue. <laughs> so this this Siren sticker maker is a really nifty little gadget. You've, if you've watched my videos, you've probably seen me use it before. It's The trick is just to give it a, a good sort of rub it, press it down hard before you, you peel them off and you've got an instant sticker and they work fantastically. So you can see as I stick everything down, it's already not exactly the same as I had originally placed it, but that's okay. Like I said, I'll, I'll do another video which can um, we'll go <laughs> through a new technique of how to remember where you've put your collage pieces. So these stamps that I'm using are from PNA, so that's just a local stationery store. Some floral stamps. The the ink pad is an Illustrated Faith one, which I've noticed isn't as black as, say, the um, stays on, but it does give a more sort of distressed um, feel. It's, it's like a lighter black, but it's really pretty. And just deciding where to, everything to go and to place everything. This this for me is the best part. It's it's so calming and relaxing. This is my time spent with God, just meditating on what I'm doing and you know the purpose of this page and the thoughts behind it. So this really is this process is this is like my happy space. <laughs> Do you have a happy place? Well, this is my happy place doing doing this. And even with the, the sticker maker, I've still managed to tear my, my little stickers slightly because I fussy cut them quite small. If you have um, clear sticker paper, it would probably be easier to print those little bits on clear sticker paper, but... Um, Yes, here and in South Africa, clear sticker paper is not so easy easy to come by. So we generally don't use it. We make do without. And you can see that even without having sort of a clear sticker paper, you can still make some really amazing pages and create some really nice pieces. The pencil that I'm going to use on, on this page is called a Stabilo All. And it's called a Stabilo All because it works on all surfaces. So it means it writes on like glass and wood and plastic and just about anything. And if you can get your hands on one of these pencils, they are amazing. They are as rare as hen's teeth. You just can't seem to find them, especially in black. They come in a few colors and carpenters use them for marking on, on wood and builders use them. But they are fantastic for art journaling because they write over any any surface including gessoed pages and oxides and gelatos and they literally write on anything and this black pencil has such a nice soft lead it's also water soluble so if you had to add water to this pencil you'd see you'd get a very like a it would be like a watercolor pencil you'd get a similar effect but the pigment is, is quite intense so it would be very black if you added water to it but i've just used it to sort of outline and scribble and do some some cross hatching just to tie all all the pieces together to create some depth and shadow and 
and really just sort of ground ground this picture and that's just perfect for the finishing touches so if you can get your hands on one of these pencils i'll list i'll list that in the description as well and i've um i finished the page off with some notes of my own and a date stamp and a little bow clippy and there we have it we'll see you back here soon